we cut it up in about five to six ton blocks and then we'll uh, pull it out uh, with the backhoe and uh, stack them uh, with a, a uh, front end loader and uh, eventually they'll be taken to the factory to be cut, cut up in uh, different shapes and sizes. Billy Walker works at a quarry not far from Coral Castle. Clearly, unearthing coral is not an easy task, even with modern technology. Walker and other quarry experts can only marvel at Ed Lead Scalman's solo quarrying and engineering feats. I think it's amazing. Uh, I like the scene how he did it. Bob Jensen is a local historian who studied Coral Castle and the life and work of the mysterious Ed Lead Scalman. It's hard to imagine how a man of Ed's size, 120 pounds, could cut 25 ton stones out of the earth, shape them, and stack them the way he has. It was a mystery then, but there are some clues. Today, Bob Jensen searches the castle wall for signs of Ed's secret technique. If you look at the wedge marks here that were created when he drove uh, wedges in with his sledgehammer and then broke this rock loose, uh, you get an idea of maybe what the process was. It's very smooth and regular here, very irregular where uh, the rock was just ripped out of the ground. Many tools Ed used to create his masterpiece are found on the castle tower's ground floor. Stone axes, winches, wedges, and pry bars. Ed's tools were not only primitive, but they were all made by Ed. Uh, his wedges were uh, made from Model T springs. Ed even made a wheelbarrow from a brake drum salvaged at a junkyard. Despite these tools left behind, we know little of Ed's construction techniques. The mystery behind Coral Castle is that nobody ever saw him do any of the work here. Uh, Ed worked completely by night with lantern light. Nobody ever saw him move or work on his creations. And uh, they would come back a week later and a new piece would be up uh, weighing tons and tons with no visible means of having moved it there. For some insight into how Ed might have worked, we can talk to those who actually knew him. As a boy, Orville Irwin got to know Ed Lead Scalman. Once he even loaned Ed his truck for a few days. Now, I knew Ed personally. I attended the silent movies with him back in the 1920s. Now, I have written a manuscript stating in detail of how he accomplished this uh, castle building. He didn't have any help from any alien power or any levitation or anything. It was 90% perspiration and his dedication and his ability to engineer this is, is how he got his castle built. In my manuscript, Irwin claims he watched Ed work and his book includes pages of illustrations depicting Ed's method of quarrying the great masses of stone. First, he would dig a trench around the desired size of the stone. And then he'd drive wedges under the edge. Once a stone was loose, Irwin says Ed raised it to ground level with a hoist and tripod and wood blocks. Once the stone was lifted up to the ground level, he then would put horizontal poles down as a track and place small logs under for rollers. Then he would take his chain hoist and tie it to a tree and that would give him horizontal leverage to pull a stone to his desired location. Once it was the desired location, he'd pry it up and then use his 10-ton jack to pry it in place. Ironically, Irwin himself grew up to be a stonemason. And in 1951, after Ed died, he, along with 300 others, was asked to complete an affidavit verifying Ed's handiwork. Over the years, new and equally incredible facts about Ed's construction feats began to emerge. We now know, for instance, that Ed's amazing accomplishment did not end with the construction process itself. 
Fred once moved the entire structure from its original site in Florida City to its present site in Homestead, and he did it completely by himself. When Ed Lead Scalnan first left Latvia, he wandered through Western Europe and Canada and ended up in Washington State. There he developed tuberculosis, and so for health reasons, he moved to the warmer climate of Florida. He arrived in Homestead where he found a small but developing town. When Ed came in 1923, uh, the downtown area of Homestead was probably only like three blocks long. There were a lot of local merchants, uh, three or four grocery stores. Uh, we had train service at least twice a day. Generally, uh, local people thought that uh, the very best was on the horizon. Ed found his very best 10 miles south of Homestead in Florida City. Here, a parcel of land would become the original site of Coral Castle. For $12, he bought this acre of ground and started to create Coral Castle as we know it today. There's a private residence on the property right now, but as you can see, some of the tower still remains here. This structure is undoubtedly Ed's first structure since it was his living quarters here on the site. In 1936, the area around his land in Florida City became too populated and he decided to move to Homestead. US-1 became the highway of choice for many in South Florida, and Ned decided to move his whole rock garden up to Homestead so that he could become rich and famous. True to form, Ed moved every piece by himself. Only this time, part of the job happened in public as Ed's borrowed trailer traversed the main road from Florida City to Homestead. The whole move took Ed about a year cherish those memories of how he did it. He, he brought the stones through the center of Homestead. He didn't take them way off in the dark or anything like that. He went right down Main Street. Once in Homestead, Ed added more and more pieces to his stone tribute. Ed built his Homestead tower and living quarters out of 243 tons of huge coral blocks, two feet thick. Sixteen steps lead to the tower where Ed rode out wild hurricanes in his hanging bed or his hanging chair. His pantry also hangs from the ceiling by a rod affixed with a funnel that held kerosene to keep ants and insects from Ed's food. Ed passed his days by reading his favorite books on magnetic currents and cosmic forces, or by designing electrical generators to power his radio and experiments. He would sometimes ride his bicycle into town to stock up on supplies. Ed earned his humble living by giving tours of his creation for 25 cents. But by nightfall, it was always back to building his castle. Ed's place, as it began to be known, became an attraction for locals and tourists. Still, Ed lived the life of a hermit. Most of his time was spent behind the eight-foot walls he had built for privacy. You can almost imagine him in his tower of coral, stargazing away his lonely nights. But was he still aching for his sweet sixteen, a half a world away? Bob Jensen says that there came a time when Ed got over being jilted, a time when his motivation may have shifted. His motivation had to change, but perhaps he had, the, the theme was set in motion and he just carried it out. But, uh, I mean, uh, Ed uh, surely had to know that it was not going to happen probably after 1930, you know, at the, at the latest, that she was not going to come.